We always begin with asking this question, or a question similar to it. I, I recently talked to a patient who had had diabetes for 50 years. And, um, and one, thing, one thing that's evident to me, if somebody's had a medical condition for that long, they're probably going to know more about diabetes than most doctors especially if they've been paying attention, if they've been reading, if they're, if they're interested in their situation. If they, they, will, they will typically educate us about their condition and how unique it is relative to the average or to the standard. Um, but many times our own knowledge about a condition tends to cloud our thinking about the bigger picture. And um, I've seen I've seen this happen where individuals are so focused on certain aspects of their health that they totally fail to address some of the core issues of their health. And, and one of the issues is, is looking at how they're doing from day to day, how they feel, and assuming that that means that they're healthy, as opposed to looking at objective measures of health. And so what we're trying to do in this program is look at everything. How we feel is very important. It gives us clues that uh, will uh, have a, put a, a significant potential to improve our health <coughs> if we pay attention to it. But many of the health concerns that we deal with, especially with diabetes or pre-diabetes or hypoglycemia, we don't feel them. That's, a, that's why these conditions like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, are referred to as the silent killers. Because it, it's not something that you feel. So we don't want to just go by how we feel, as important as that may be. And uh, so paying attention, checking our blood sugars before and two hours after meals, establishing what our blood sugars are based on different factors in our life, in our day, morning, throughout the, the, the afternoon and then evening. It's so critical to do that. So what is diabetes? It is a blood sugar high enough to cause what? Serious, Serious health complications. And, and then that naturally leads us to, to the discussion of the stages of high blood sugar. And you have this in your in your handout entitled Understanding Blood Sugars. I believe uh, midway through page four or five, there's, there's, a, there's this table of looking at the stages of high blood sugar. And it's critical that we pay attention to this. It's critical that we understand that we want to bring our blood sugars down under stage three. Under stage three high blood sugar. And, uh, and so that would be our goal of getting the blood sugars, on average, to most of the time, closer to 100 before any meal, breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and closer to 140 or, or under 140 two hours after the beginning of the meal. So that's, that's the basis by which we consider whether our blood sugars are being controlled medically or not. So the, diagnosing and managing diabetes, understanding where we are, is very simple. We just look at those two numbers. What's happening before the meal, what's happening two hours after the meal. That's the basis for understanding management of diabetes. Now once we do that, once we have put in place multiple strategies to accomplish that, then we need to, again, broaden our horizons a little bit and not just focus on that. Because we're all biologically unique. And just having that blood sugar under control before and two hours after the meal may not be sufficient for us. In fact, you might have an optimal blood sugar before a meal and two hours after the meal, but at one hour, the blood sugar may be above 200. That's a problem. Uh, or, or there may be other concerns where the medicines sometimes cause the blood sugars to get too low leading to those complications. And we don't want the blood sugars to get too low. It's bad for the nervous system. It's bad for the brain. 
We discussed that some last week. So, so we want to pay attention to many, many issues. And today we really bring up uh, a, a unique discussion that we've touched on briefly in the past, but I wanted to devote the bulk of the discussion today to, to this topic. Okay, but first, okay, I, I would be remiss in not reminding us that, that really for us to be effective in our management plan, we need to consider the equally important aspects of nutritional management and exercise management. That's why, again, we bring Kristen in on a weekly basis to, to remind us of that and to share some concepts with us that can help us at home, okay, and also give us some idea of what else is available here at Rancho Family Medical Group to assist us in, in risk factor management. So if we just focus on one, and most of us are that way. Most of us are good in one area, but not in good in the other way. We like to do what we're good at. We don't like to, we don't like to do the things that oh, we're not, not as interested in that part. And so we kind of pat ourselves on the back <coughs> in terms of, yeah, we're doing that one thing really well. And, and we keep reminding ourselves we're doing that really well. But the problem is that one thing done really well is not in any way sufficient enough to accomplish our goal, which is preventing the complications, right? That's what it's all about. We want to prevent those, those serious complications associated with abnormal blood sugars. And, and more than that, though, we don't want to just avoid the negative. We want, to, we want to enhance the positive. We want to take advantage of life at its fullest. We want to enjoy health at the <coughs> highest level, at the optimal <coughs> level. And, and those are the principles that we really concentrate on. Fortunately, if we focus on those concepts, we also get the risk management. We also get the risk factor control and prevention of complications. The, the, the key, again, is checking blood sugars. So if you have been hesitating to check your blood sugars on a daily basis, before and after at least one meal a day, I would strongly encourage you to do that. If you don't have the strips, make sure you call your primary care provider. Call, call your nurse and say, I need to get this. What do I need to do? Many times they'll provide a prescription for you. They'll send that information into your insurance company, and you will therefore be able to access that packet of uh, equipment through the mail. It'll be sent to you. If there's any questions, how your insurance company handles that, just talk to your primary uh, physician's nurse.